That's not too bad. The first item of business is a statement by Hamza Youssef on the Scottish Government's response to the expert review of mental health services for young people entering and in custody at HMP and uh, youth offenders uh, Pullman. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Hamza Youssef. Cabinet Secretary, please. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, last November, I asked Her Majesty, Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons for Scotland to carry out an expert review of the mental health support for young people in custody following the tragic deaths by suicide of Katie Allen and William Lindsay Brown at Pullman last year. I'd like to take this opportunity once again to offer my and the government's sincerest condolences to their families and to all of those who have lost loved ones to suicide. Every death of a young person is undoubtedly a tragedy uh, for them, their families uh, and their friends, but also for Scottish society more widely uh, that has lost the opportunity of their talent and potential contribution. The purpose of this review was to consider the arrangements for young people with mental health and wellbeing needs entering and in custody. Uh, a fatal accident inquiry is mandatory whenever someone has died in legal custody. And the cases of Katie Allen and William Lindsay uh, Brown, the Crown Office is undertaking independent investigations in advance of mandatory fatal accident inquiries. Uh, it was therefore not the purpose of the review to investigate the specific circumstances surrounding either of those deaths. The Inspector of Prosecutions in Scotland is currently undertaking a follow-up review of the thematic report on FAIs that was published in August 2016. At Lord Advocate's request, this follow-up review will consider the scope and merits of prioritising the death investigation process when a young person dies in custody. The follow-up report is due to be submitted to Lord Advocate this summer. Separately, uh, Scottish Prison Service are considering what more can be done to improve the transparency of information about apparent suicides in Scotland's prisons pending formal determination by an FAI. Clearly, however, our priority must be to aim to prevent as far as possible the circumstances that can give rise to the risk of suicide in prison. I'm very grateful for Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons and to Dr Helen Smith, who have worked with her to oversee the review for the comprehensive and, and robust work they carried out. Both the Mental Health Review and the Routine Inspection Report of Pullman recognise the good work at Pullman and highlight the hard work, compassion and dedication of frontline prison and healthcare staff. I'm very grateful to the management and staff at Pullman for the open and constructive way in which they've engaged with the review and also informed its recommendations. The review by the Chief Inspector and Dr Helen Smith is comprehensive and is wide ranging. The review makes some important and challenging findings highlighting the heightened vulnerability of young people in remand and those in early days of custody, the damaging impact of social isolation, the vital importance of good information sharing between agencies and, and many more issues. Can I put on record my own appreciation for the staff at Pullman, uh, the overwhelming majority of whom I know care very much about the young people they work with. There are positives in both the inspection uh, and the expert review. However, uh, presiding officer, as you would expect, I intend to focus my remarks and the substance on the areas of challenge and improvement. An action group including relevant officials from across Scottish Government, the Scottish Prison Service and the NHS has been convened to oversee prog progress across the numerous review recommendations. Some of the recommendations will be taken forward under existing Scottish Government strategies. When I met with the parents of Katie Allen in November last year, I stated my commitment to respond to the concerns raised by the tragic deaths of both Katie and William. On Monday, I wrote to both families to offer to meet with them. Uh, I very much hope to have that opportunity to discuss the findings of the review with them uh, and very much look forward to value uh, and I will value their input as we, as we take forward uh, our own response. It is clear from the review that the necessary actions extend beyond Pullman. In terms of turning to some of the substantial recommendations uh, from the expert review providing officer, uh, no one going through the justice system should be harmed by the failure of agencies to fully share information with one another where data protection legislation allows it. The Health and Justice Collaboration Improvement Board, which draws together senior leaders from health and social care, justice and local government, is exploring how public bodies can make sure that decisions are as fully for informed as possible. The, the, that board is mapping the flows of information in the health and justice system. Ministers will work with partner agencies to build on that work in order to consider and take forward actions in response to the recommendations, including what immediate actions we can take to improve information sharing 
between the different agencies supporting the care of young people entering uh, and in Pullman. The Scottish Prison Service have confirmed that they will develop a new health and wellbeing strategy. This will include a bespoke mental health strategy for young people. The review found that the talk to me, the, the, the SPS suicide prevention strategy is, to quote, robust and generally followed well at Pullman. That strategy, which is relevant when the risk of suicide is deemed to be immediate, is overseen by the National Suicide Prevention Risk Management Group group, which includes representatives from expert partners, including Samaritans, Breathing Space and Families Outside. The review makes a number of recommendations relevant to the Talk to Me strategy, and the Scottish Prison Service will work with that group to consider those and ensure that their approach to suicide prevention for young people is effective, including the approach for people coming off of Talk to Me. The national group is also developing a self-harm policy and will oversee work to consider lessons from the use of safer spaces in different settings, including secure care, which may allow safer environs, environments to be more supportive and less sterile. Work to address the recommendations which relate to staffing and training and support for staff at Pullman are well underway. In terms of mental health staffing in prisons, uh, we have committed through Action 15 in our mental health strategy to increase access to the overall mental health workforce by 800 additional staff. This will be supported by investment rising to 35 million by 2021-22. This month, the Minister for Mental Health has written to all Chief Officers of Integrated Joint Boards and Chief Executives of the NHS Boards to highlight the importance of recruiting additional mental health workers in prisons under this commitment and asking them, to, asking them of details of how they will plan recruitment for this financial year. The review report highlights that those who are young and in the early stages of custody are especially vulnerable to suicide. Everyone entering prison is assessed for the risk of suicide. Inspectors were impressed by many aspects of the interactive induction appointment, highlighting the compassion of staff undertaking admission and the role of peer mentors. But we know that the time people currently spend on remand is largely unproductive. This review underlines how potentially damaging periods spent on remand can be for individuals. The number of young people aged, 21, uh, aged under 21 years old held on remand in Scotland has fallen by a quarter over the past five years. However, we will continue to work to ensure alternatives to remand are available for young people and to support those young people held on remand. The issue of body searches as part of the regime within prisons was highlighted by the family of Katie Allen in particular. I can confirm today that as a priority, SPS will stop the routine body searching of under 18s in custody. Uh, the Scottish Prison Service will evaluate the impact of these changes after a year. In line with the development of the new female custodial estate, SPS will adopt a more trauma-informed approach to its searching process for women. Uh, supporting positive family contact throughout someone's time in prison has wide-ranging benefits for that individual and their family. It reduces the risk of reoffending and supports uh, positive relationships, which contribute to good mental health and mitigate vulnerability. With a view to supporting that, I can confirm that I have asked the Scottish Prison Service to explore the options for implementing a pilot of in-cell phones across HMYOI Pullman with necessary controls, of course, in place. At present, prisoners in Scotland can access telephones in communal areas at certain times only. In-cell phones have the potential to contribute to prisoners' well-being by making family contact significantly easier. They also have the benefit of improving access to national helpline services, and technology can offer the potential to develop telehealth services and support for well-being in prisons. We will explore the options available as we take forward the pilot, but we will ensure that the prison service retains control over the phone numbers prisoners can access and the ability to monitor calls. In terms of monitoring our progress, we remain committed to improving outcomes for young people in the community and, of course, in custody. I, along with, the rel with relevant ministerial colleagues, will hold a roundtable with key partner agencies before the end of the year to review our progress. It should not take the tragedies like the death of Katie Allen and William Lindsay for services to improve. I am deeply saddened by what has happened to those two young people and by any life that is lost in our care. 
We know that young people who commit offences and become involved in the criminal justice system are also often the young people who have experienced multiple trauma and those who are the most vulnerable. It's our duty to ensure we do everything possible to help them rehabilitate when necessary and vitally to keep them safe from harm during the time they are in our care. The expert review is substantial. Now, we will work on the many recommendations contained therein. Our ultimate aim is to oversee the continued fall in the numbers of young people entering our criminal justice system. As a progressive society, it's important we have transparency, uh, we have a trauma-informed approach, but above all, presiding officer, a compassionate justice system that understands the often complex reasons why people end up in prison and believe in their ability to, re to rehabilitate. I will endeavour to keep Parliament updated on our response to the expert review. Thank, thank you very much. I have about 20 minutes for the Cabinet Secretary to take questions on his statement. Can I ask those who wish to ask questions to press the request to speak buttons now? There is no time in hand this afternoon, so I'm relying on you to be disciplined. We'll see how it goes. I call Annie Wells, followed by Polly McNeill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too would like to offer my sincere condolences to the families and friends affected by the tragic deaths of Katie Allen and William Lindsay last year. Thank you also to the Chief Inspector of Prisons and to Dr Helen Smith for their work in forming the review, as well as the Cabinet Secretary for foresight of this statement. Prevention, of course, is key. The SPS has said it will develop a new mental health strategy for young people. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary when we can expect to see this? And can I also ask the Cabinet Secretary when he will report back to the Parliament on the steps taken to improve communication across the justice system and those to ensure the risks and vulnerabilities of young inmates are given careful consideration, particularly in the initial three months of custody, these issues being of specific concern in the report. The Cabinet Secretary has highlighted the desperate need to recruit more mental health workers in prisons, and I am pleased to see this inclusion, but on the basis that as of the end of April this year, just six additional whole term equivalents have been recruited, what exact steps will be taken to vastly improve the, traje the trajectory? Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Can I thank uh, Annie Wells for her questions and, and, and the very constructive manner in which she uh, asked them uh, as well. Uh, in terms of, of, of a timeline, I hope Annie Wells will, will, will forgive me, the Scottish Prison Service is rightly taking a, a really informed approach by talking to the partners, some of which I mentioned uh, in, in my remarks, to develop uh, that bespoke mental health strategy for, for young people. So I will ask the Chief Executive of the Prison Service to write to Annie Wells directly to give her more detail about the steps that they're taking to, to, to develop that mental health strategy, bespoke mental health strategy for young people and some of the timelines that are associated with that. In terms of the issue around remand in particular, I couldn't agree more with, with what was said and I hope I highlighted that in, in my remarks. If I can be very honest and, and very frank, of course, and I think she'll understand this, uh, I'm sure she will, that this is not entirely my gift in terms of who goes, of course, to remand or, or not. Uh, the judiciary is rightly independent and we all accept that independence and, and guard fiercely that independence of the judiciary. What I can do, and what is absolutely uh, in the government's gift uh, to, to, to a large extent, is to work with partners to create robust community alternatives so, uh, and to work on things like we're doing with the Management Offenders Bill, which are div uh, alternatives um, to, to, to necessarily remand, such as bail supervision, uh, electronic monitoring and so on uh, and so forth. So uh, we'll continue to do that. Uh, in terms of, of what action uh, is being taken, uh, I mentioned in my remarks, and I see the Minister for Mental Health obviously is here, that the Minister has written to the health boards to ask them what they will do in this financial year. So we're not waiting around for future years and so on and so forth, but has asked what was being done this financial year to help to recruit more mental health workers into our prisons. And I'm sure uh, the Minister for Mental Health, uh, she's here, uh, would be happy to furnish uh, Annie Wells with any further details should she require it. Polly McNeill, followed by John Finney. The recent tragedies of Katie Allen and William Lindsay Brown highlight deeper problems of deaths and suicides in custody. And I'd like to associate with my remarks with the Cabinet Secretary and Annie Wells. And we agree that all steps to protect the welfare and physical health associated with being in custody has to be addressed. Will the Cabinet Secretary accept all seven recommendations in the report? I'm sure he agrees that we cannot afford to make the same mistakes 
But how will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that Talk To Me is not simply a tick box exercise? When will training commence for prison staff who have asked for and need specific training on mental health disorders and dealing with the welfare of young people? An issue highlighted by Katie Allen's family that many people in custody will have mental health problems just because they are in custody and dealing with that is important to train our staff. And finally, presenting officer, um, in the case of William Lindsay Brown, it highlighted the issue about secure places and the reduction in 26-17 from 90 to 84 places does not give the courts the disposals that they might need in certain cases. When will the Cabinet Secretary act to ensure the appropriate placing of young people where appropriate in secure places and not the prison estate is going to be more widely available? Cabinet Secretary. Can I thank um, Polly McNeill for uh, her questions and some of her remarks? If I can give her some, some assurance, when it comes to talk to me, that is about the immediate um, potential vulnerability of an individual uh, at, at that moment uh, in time. What I've confirmed today, uh, and, and I've reiterated that in my response to Annie Wells, is that SPS will work on developing a bespoke mental health strategy for young people. And similarly, if she would find it helpful, I'm sure the Chief Executive of the Scottish Prison Service would be happy to talk Polly McNeill through, through, through how they're going to develop that in an iterative process. Um, I hope to give you reassurance, and I, did, I think I mentioned this in my statement, but to give you that additional reassurance, training is well underway. And again, if she wants, to, she wants me to, 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 to facilitate contact with uh, the Chief Executive of the Scottish Prison Service, I'm sure Colin McConnell will be happy to, to meet and to give detail of how that training uh, is, is developing and how they're, they're rolling out that training to their staff across the prison estate. Although we are focused... Uh, rightly and understandably um, on, on young people here, uh, particularly in face of those terrible tragedies, um, of course this is an issue that affects the adult population in our prisons as well. So it will be important that, um, although I talk about a bespoke mental health strategy for young people, there will be a strategy uh, for those right, mental health strategy for those right across uh, the prison estate. Can I, can I, can I say to Paul McNeill on, on wider issues um, around secure care, and the Deputy First Minister is, is here and he and I work closely on this uh, agenda. There has been action that has been taken since the terrible tragedy of, 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 of William uh, Lindsay. As of today, uh, there are available secure beds uh, and secure units. Um, this is, as I think I've said to Point McNeill on, on occasion, I know she understands, this is, is an issue with a lot of nuance um, and complexity. Um, there have been reductions in admissions from Scotland and secure units um, have to have a certain level, a very high level of occupancy in order for them to be able to continue providing those services and therefore there are a number of, of cross-border referrals that come in. Um, and so there are options for the Scottish Government to consider and potentially purchasing space uh, and so on and so forth, but these do have complexities, but we are working through them and given absolute assurance that we are working through them. Uh, and of course, in writing, I can furnish uh, Paul McNeill with more detail uh, on that, but let her be reassured that as things stand today, um, there are uh, there is availability of, of secure beds in our secure estate. Uh, thank you. Now, I appreciate this is a very sensitive uh, matter indeed, but that's taken seven minutes and two questions. I have 12 people want to ask questions, so succinct questions, please, and succinct answers. Not missing the point, but trying to hone it down. Mr Finney, I'm no doubt you'll set an example, followed by uh, Liam MacArthur. No pleasure there, can Presiding officer, thank you. Yeah, condolences and, and thanks that others have, have expressed as well. Cabinet Secretary, you talk about a compassionate justice system. You, the, the, your statement acknowledges that demand is largely um, unproductive. We talk about ensuring al um, alternatives. There's mention there of CESA space in different settings. Can I ask that there's some real creative thinking put into this so that these safer spaces don't necessarily um, always mean confinement, please? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I couldn't agree more with John Finney. It's a very well-made point, and, and I think I made. The, I think I said in my statement that safer space doesn't mean a sterile space, uh, and that is the thinking that's going on in Scottish Prison Service. <coughs> and again, if you'd like to speak to the Scottish Prison Service, they can give him some assurances on that. But he, he's absolutely right to raise the point that he does. Liam MacArthur, followed by Rona McKay. Uh, thank you. Clearly, the 
the tragic deaths of Katie Allen and William Lindsay ensure that we must uh, learn the lessons. Can I also pass on thanks to Chief Inspector and Dr Smith for a thorough report. Uh, and much of the Cabinet Secretary's statement is very welcome, including the pilot on in-cell phones. But more than two years ago, the Scottish Government promised that prisons would share in the rollout of 800 new mental health workers. Can the Cabinet Secretary clarify how many of the 800 will be based in prisons at the end of that process? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think I have already mentioned in my statement, and of course questions to Annie Wells, that the Minister for Mental Health has written to health boards to ask them about their plans in this financial year. Uh, I'll ask the Minister for Mental Health to, 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 to write to Lee MacArthur to give detail of those responses that have been received, but there is a priority because uh, we understand the need that, are in our, that is in our prisons, and I would say particularly amongst our young people uh, in, in, in the custodial estate. Rona Mackay, followed by Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome that the Cabinet Secretary mentioned that the report highlights compassion and dedication of frontline prison and healthcare staff. I understand the Scottish Prison Service and NHS partners have already undertaken a range of actions in recent months to improve health and wellbeing support in Pullman. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what work is already underway? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, there is uh, quite a lot of, of work underway, and again, uh, if, she, if Rona McCarry would like more details, then I'm sure the prison service can, can furnish them with a bit. For, for an example, uh, refresher training for the prison service suicide prevention strategy, talk to me, has been delivered to 95% to of available staff uh, in, in Pullman. Um, implementation of intensive training for staff in residential areas at Pullman uh, and mental health first aid uh, for young people has, has also uh, commenced. Um, an additional senior manager was appointed in December 2018 with specific responsibilities for overseeing suicide prevention strategy and suicide uh, awareness. And also the health board have been working very closely with POM and NHS Forth Valley uh, in terms of uh, uh, giving over resource in relation to senior staff who have been appointed to strengthen leadership uh, and, and support. And there are many other things that have happened. And, and again, uh, I don't have time, but Rona Mackay uh, could certainly uh, get in touch with the Scottish Prison Service who will be able to give a, a lot more detail. Liam Kerr, followed by Angus Macdonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to come back to the Cabinet Secretary's remarks earlier on remand. The report notes that young people felt they struggled to access services when they were on remand. So what will the Cabinet Secretary do to ensure that those who are on remand have appropriate access to activities and services? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, um, continue to try to see a reduction in the number of remand. I think that's where our focus will be. But he's right to say, well, what would you do for those that are in remand? Uh, we will continue to, of course, uh, fund uh, and work with the prison service and third sector operators uh, um, to, 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 to help provide uh, services for young people uh, in our care. But actually, really important that we focus on reducing that level of remand. And Liam Kerr and I have had many discussions of the fact that we are, I think, both in agreement that remand is far too high in Scotland in terms of a proportion of our prison population, and, and, and are almost double that in terms of jurisdictions nearby in England uh, and Wales. So the focus will be on the alternatives to remand, community justice alternatives, potential bail supervision, electronic monitoring. All of those have to have appropriate safeguards, I, I, of course, and, and, and I appreciate that. But the focus has to be on reduction of the number in remand. And what this review has done has placed the focus on the support and the intense support that is needed in, in, in a young person's first few days uh, in remand or indeed uh, be it in, in, in custody there, thereafter. Angus MacDonald, <coughs> by Monica Lennon. As the Cabinet Secretary stated, it's clear from the review that the necessary actions required extend beyond Pullman. So can the Cabinet Secretary outline how progress will be monitored when taking forward the new recommendations at Pullman and elsewhere? Cabinet Secretary. I, I hope that, um, you know, by, by, by having some of my ministerial colleagues here to, to my right and, and my left, it's a demonstration um, of the cross-portfolio, cross-governmental uh, importance that we attach to, to this agenda. So I, I mentioned in my statement, uh, worth reiterating, that an action group that will include uh, relevant officials from across Scottish Government, the Scottish Prison Service and the NHS has been convened already to oversee progress across the review's recommendations. Um, we remain committed uh, absolutely to improving outcomes for young people uh, in, in custody. Um, and I, alongside my ministerial colleagues, uh, will hold a round table with key partner agencies before the end of the year to review our progress. Uh, I also mentioned that I, I hope to meet the families, and I think there's a date to, to, to meet next week with the family of, of, of Katie Allen. Um, and I, I would like them and others who have been affected to help us to shape that response. I think it's hugely important for us to listen to their uh, concerns and, of course, their real lived experience in terms of, of, of Pullman and custody um, and, indeed, the justice system more broadly 
and to feed in their views in terms of how we shape the response in the future. Monica Lennon, followed by Emma Harper. Cabinet Secretary, I'm interested to understand why the HMI inspection report did not look into the culture of bullying that was highlighted in previous inspections that date back as far as, as 2003. And the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that Katie Allen's death certificate regards her cause of death as hanging, but the SPS website registered Katie's death as not determined awaiting FAI. Now, if this had happened in England or Wales um, under the Ministry of Justice, that may have been recorded as suspected suicide awaiting FAI. It just doesn't feel quite right to me. So I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary agrees that um, we need greater transparency here and how we might achieve that. Cabinet Secretary. Can I say on Monica Lennon's first point, and I thank her for, for, for both her questions, can I say on Monica Lennon's first point, um, she is within her rights, of course, to, 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 to write to the inspector, uh, who is independent, of course, uh, to, to ask her any questions in around the inspection report or indeed the expert review. Uh, and the inspection report of Pullman is very thorough. Uh, it spoke a lot about the workforce and, um, you know, if I, I'm paraphrasing slightly, but I don't think uh, I'm too far off when she described the workforce as being compassionate, committed uh, workforce and the vast majority of, of Pullman staff, I don't doubt, uh, are just that. So uh, she did uh, look in certainly very close scrutiny in terms of the workforce. But if Monica Lennon has any specific questions about that inspection, then of course she would be right to go to the independent inspector and, and ask those uh, questions. In terms of the second question that Monica Lennon asks, um, I'm in agreement. Uh, I mentioned in my statement that um, transparency is hugely important. I understand the dilemma also that Scottish Prison Service have um, when it comes to an FAI, uh, a fatal accident inquiry. They perhaps, I know, I know they've felt uh, that um, they have to be extremely careful uh, about what they say publicly or what is put in the public domain before a determination is made in FAI. Notwithstanding that, uh, I think uh, where there are other examples, she cites the, the, uh, the example in England and Wales, uh, I think that there is um, things that we can do to improve the communication uh, and, and the transparency and the openness, which is so important for public confidence. So that is one area that is being explored and being taken forward uh, as I speak. <coughs> I call Emma Harper, followed by Margaret Mitchell. And I think Margaret Mitchell may have to be the last one, I'm afraid, with the length of the answer. So I appreciate why, uh, in, some, in these circumstances, they're longer, and I hope other members understand too. Uh, Emma Harper, followed by Margaret Mitchell. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary mentioned access to in-cell phones for young people, and I look forward to following this up. But can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what additional support is available to the families of young people, particularly those being held on remand at HM Pullman? Cabinet Secretary. Well, um, we will continue to invest in, in, in the prison estate, and at the moment that investment is focused in around the female custodial uh, estate, because um, the new community custody units we have, for example, are designed very much to provide and help with that family support. In terms of Pullman, the pilot of in-cell phones, I think, uh, is very exciting. Um, uh, there are, of course, uh, and the potential for them, I think, in terms of family um, relations and connections are, are hugely important. What I would also say to Emma, Emma Harper is the prison visitor centres that we help to fund um, are really, really important. And sometimes they can get negative publicity uh, from particular elements in, in, in our media, which I think is unfair. But those prison visitor centres are hugely important in terms of that family contact. So that family contact, family relationships are hugely important in terms of, of, of our young people. Um, where we haven't got that right, uh, where the prison service hasn't got that right, um, I think there are plenty of recommendations for us to take forward. Um, in, in relation to, to, to Pullman and specifically, and that is why we're piloting the in-cell phones in Pullman first and foremost, as opposed to any other parts of the prison estate. And Margaret Mitchell. Uh, during its short inquiry into secure places and mental health provision in Scotland Justice Committee heard the transition between secure place and Pullman can be vital. Some vulnerable people benefit from close personal relationships formed there only for these to be broken when they're 18 and near the end of their uh, term at the, the place and have to transfer to Pullman. So can the Cabinet Secretary undertake to look at the transition rules and to ensure that they are not so inflexible that we undo months of good work vulnerable young people have already undertaken in secure care? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to explore with my, my colleague, the Deputy First Minister, 
those issues in and around transition, I think, is a very important point that, that Margaret Mitchell raises. Can I, can I also just make mention of a point that's very related to that, which the review shone a real light on, which was, um, frankly, the disappointing nature of the information sharing between agencies uh, and services. Uh, and that is very disappointing. I know there are no doubt issues around information sharing, and we're all aware of those, but um, there is th this is an issue that Justice and Health Collaboration Board is very much looking at, but the information flowing between the courts, between social work, between secure care units, between custody if necessary, and the prison estate, I should say, uh, these are vitally important and, and there should be no gaps in that. So if I can give Margaret Mitchell assurance that yes, in terms of transition, uh, we, will, we will reflect on what Margaret Mitchell says uh, and look at that, uh, but also the information sharing is one of the key recommendations that are being taken forward uh, and we will look to monitor that via the action group. Uh, thank you. That concludes questions. My apologies to Ruth McGuire, Mary Fee, Fulton McGregor and Daniel Johnson being unable to call you um, due to time pressures this afternoon, I'm afraid. I'm moving straight on to the next item of business, which is portfolio questions. And the first question...